G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy and Just The Tips. This week looking at round 15. Uh, solid week on the track in terms of tipping. Got five out of six. And disappointingly, you may or may not remember, I tipped the Western Bulldogs to beat Fremantle last week. And unfortunately, at the last minute, changed my tip. Like I said in the football come down, I just think, I think my head was saying Bulldogs. My gut was saying Fremantle. I trusted my gut. And I shouldn't. Much like Daniel Busher, my gut is all over the place. But other than that, I got all the tips right. Um, it was just that one that I got wrong, which is annoying. It seems like everyone did pretty well. Tips more or less went as expected this week. Other than, you know, North Melbourne getting very close to knocking off Collingwood. That would have been insane. The whole game was insane, as we already uncovered. So that gives me five. And I've got a total score of 79. We'll go through this week's winners. So our members tipping competition winner is Rota Wash with six correct tips and a margin of five. Well done, Rota. In the general tipping competition, we had 19 people get a perfect round. That is obscene. 19 people get the margin right as well. And I know that like there's over a thousand people in the league. So 19 people is not maybe that crazy, but it still seems baffling to me. I would like to shout out, shout out one winner and I couldn't. There were 19 of you, so congrats. The members tipping competition leader is Real Swift with 85. That's really good going real. And he's almost winning the general competition. But instead we have Chase Costa, who I believe... I think this is the first time Chase has been leading the competition at any point. So well done. 86 correct tips with a margin of 329. And Tully Griffith's average of 2043 is enough to be winning our fantasy competition as well. So we're going to more or less crack straight in this week. It is a short round, some good games. Naturally, the buys. There's two more pesky weeks of the buy rounds, which uh, you know I don't really enjoy. And it makes the video shorter as well. So we'll crack more or less in. We have got the first game of the round, Carlton versus Geelong at the MCG. And this could be very juicy. Two good sides, in my opinion. So it's technically second versus sixth as it currently stands. Geelong are in a bit of a form slump, and I'm not willing to write them off. I mean, what have they won? One of their last six. Um, but with the star power they have, you know, I'm just reluctant to assume that this form slump is here to stay. And uh, I think they were pretty decent against the Swans. This was prior to the bye. It is also worth noting they have a bye. And that, as far as I can remember, there is a narrative around Geelong being really bad off buys. Could it help them correct a form slump? Maybe. But it's something to consider. They're not too good off the bye. Carlton, by contrast, really look to have gone up a gear, I think. You know, I think over time, they've sort of gotten some players back from injury, looking a lot more like a well-oiled unit. They're also coming off the bye, that's worth noting. Um, and they were too good for Essendon the last time they actually played. They won that game by four goals. And on current form, Essendon is a tougher opponent than Geelong. So I, you know, barring some sort of real return to form here, I think Carlton rightfully start favourites in this game. And I am not willing to tip a, uh, anything other than a close-ish game. So I'll say Carlton by 18 points. I think they've earned favouritism. I'm not going to discount Geelong's chances. This is going to be a pretty good game, I hope. Uh, but I'll nonetheless tip the Blues. Port Adelaide versus the Brisbane Lions. Now, this is the inverse of the qualifying final, I think, where the Brisbane Lions were far too good for the power at the Gabba. Now, contrasting fortunes this year, I think the Lions are starting to get their act together a little bit. They've certainly been pretty good over the last five or six. I think in the last five, they've won three, drawn one, lost one. They were pretty solid in their win against the Saints. It was a late charge by St Kilda, a pretty impressive end to the game to some extent. And the Lions were too good by 20 points. Uh, the power, on the other hand, I thought they were really disappointing against the Giants. I didn't think that was a particularly good showing, and I think their midfield in particular really struggled to get their hands on the footy. Nonetheless, they're not having a bad season, and like I said, contrasting fortunes to some extent where you've got the power up in sixth, and if they win this game, I'd imagine they go close to the top four by the end of the round, but bearing in mind, obviously, some teams have played more games than others. Now, Brisbane obviously won the qualifying final, but if I'm not mistaken, in round one or two of last year, the power smashed them. Actually, I've got the head-to-head -head open. Um, there you go, qualifying final. Brisbane won that by you know, 10 goals, 9 goals. Uh, Port Adelaide smashed them in round one. It was round one. <clears throat> okay. Now, I do like to look at the head-to-head -head naturally um, because it sort of indicates how teams go at certain grounds as much as anything. Then you had three years of them just playing at the Gabba, and then in 2019, Brisbane won that game heavily. I'm pretty sure the power weren't good in 2019. I think in 2020 was when they <clears throat> really elevated. Hmm, this is a tricky one, actually. I'm not too sure. I actually think the Lions on their day do look a little bit better than the power, but they haven't shown it as consistently. And the power are also still kind of inconsistent. I think I'm going to go with the home side here, but I've got I've got an iffy feeling. I feel like this is, might be a bit 50-50, so I'll say the power by just 10 points. Now we have the Sydney Derby. This should be a good game. So I predicted this is my grand final at the start of the year, and then I doubled down with a little bit of sheepishness. I doubled down on that in my mid-season prediction to back in the Giants to come back and also play in the grand final against Sydney. So this is a grand final preview, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you can't talk me out of it. Um, okay, this should be a pretty good game. Now the Giants, again, like haven't been in the most compelling form 
Most recent win was against the Power. They were solid in that without being outstanding. It was a scrappy game, you know. Both sides miss a lot of opportunities in front of goal, so it's hard to translate that. But I think the Giants are probably... I'm expecting them to build well into the second half of the year. Just a gut feeling. That's not really... I mean, there is a bit of recency bias. They finished the year well last year, but I think, generally speaking, they are a team that lifts when it's time to go, and this is definitely time to go. A big, big clash. The Swans have barely put a foot wrong this year. One loss, uh, 149%, and clearly, clearly the best team in the competition. And just the midfielders, it's just got so many weapons. Like, Brody Grundy's in great form. Then you've got Warner, Heaney, Golden. This should be a really good game, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. Let's look at the head-to-head. Sydney are clearly the better side. There's no doubt about that. But let's just have a look at how they go against each other. So they have played once this year, and the Swans were too good at the SCG. Uh, and late last year, the Swans also beat the Giants, um, which I suppose kind of belied the form, right? Like the Giants obviously made it all the way to a prelim, and the Swans uh, went out in week one. The game before that, the Giants won at the SCG. Hmm, trigger. Nothing really super compelling there. I think, I think I'm going to go the upset. I think I'm going to go the upset. I think Sydney will be vulnerable at some points. I really do. I think GWS are good enough to beat them on their day. And it looked like, we looked like for a bit there, the Crows were going to get an upset over the Swans last week. So I think they might be vulnerable. And I do just have this gut feel. Like, this is not me thinking GWS are better, but I think I'm going to tip the Giants to upset win by eight points. Call me crazy. Upset of the round. Oh, speaking of upset of the round, this is also potential. Melbourne taking on North Melbourne. Now, the bye well and truly came at a good time for the Ds. Like, you obviously, big form slump. Going into the bye, you know, big loss to Freeman on the loss to West Coast in Perth. Pretty poor on the King's birthday game on uh, in the big freeze as well. And now Petrarca's out for the year with that horrible injury. Not a lot's going right. And they're coming up against a team with a bit of spark about them now. North Melbourne have had a good fortnight. Obviously too good for West Coast in Perth. And then in, more impressively, in my opinion, their performance against Collingwood to get nine goals up. But if they can do that against Collingwood, even if Collingwood are a little bit depleted, they could do that against Melbourne. It's just so hard to back them in. It really is so hard to have faith, but I genuinely see the potential here. So this is another upset of the round contender because I think Melbourne have been lackluster. They still have some really quality players. They just need to snap out of the malaise that they're currently in. And no Petrarca hurts, but I've seen teams galvanize sometimes when their best player goes out. Ugh, I'm not brave enough to tip North. I'm sorry, North fans. I really do envisage a, game, a scenario here where North Melbourne win this game. But I think I'm going to just go with a favourite slightly. Um, and let's say it's 24 points to the Ds. SNM versus West Coast at Marvel Stadium. Now, last time these two sides met at this ground, West Coast was, I would say, a worse side. And um, they played well that day and nearly won. That being said, Essendon is also a much better side than they were last year. So let's be fair. They've also met once this year at Optus Stadium. Essendon were the better side, clearly. West Coast came back late, nearly snatched a win, but ultimately didn't. So two close games in a row, and I actually think this will be close as well. I don't think there's any doubt Essendon is a much better side, but sometimes I feel like teams get into this rhythm where they play close games against each other, and I'm feeling that about this game. I, I think West Coast is going to come out improved. That's my gut feeling as a biased fan. I think they will take it up to Essendon, but with no Harley Reid and probably no Tim Kelly... It's hard to imagine they have the weapons to actually get the win. So I'm going to say West Coast challenge Essendon for three and a half quarters and Essendon run away by, we'll call it 20 points, but I could see it being closer than that. Fremantle versus the Gold Coast Suns. This could be a good game and it, and it is very important for the context of this season. If you look at the ladder position, there are two teams probably competing for one final spot, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? We've got Melbourne in the eight now and that's starting to look a little dicey, but... Fremantle, a little bit Jekyll and Hyde, as have been Gold Coast. And, you know, Fremantle probably in a more unpredictable way, whereas Gold Coast have sort of routinely lost away and routinely won at home. And this will be a big test for them. Fremantle in Perth will not be a simple game for them. It'll be really interesting to see the midfield battle between these two sides when you've got Fremantle, the best clearance differential team in the comp, even though they just got schooled by the Western Bulldogs. Um, you know, Sarong and Raul going head to head. This will be, it'll be actually a pretty good watch. I'm kind of keen for this. For Fremantle, this is... This is an important like test. This is a hurdle they cannot stumble at. If, they, if they're serious about playing finals, they were disappointing against the Bulldogs after being really good against Melbourne. And generally, I think there's a finals quality side in there. So if that is the case, they should be winning this game against a young Gold Coast side who are poor on the road. But I wouldn't discount Gold Coast entirely. I think they're good enough to at least go close. And, you know, I think historically, if you look at this season, they're not winning away, but, you know, they've won in Perth before. So I'm tipping another good game here. I'm going to tip the home side as the favourites. Um, it'll be a big win for Gold Coast if they win this, but I think Fremantle 
are better and should win this game by 17. Well, there you have it, guys. That is uh, my predictions for this round. And we look at the ladder now. That Brisbane versus Melbourne game will be interesting. So we still got Sydney and Carlton in the top two. Essendon restore their spot in third with a win over West Coast, presumably. GWS, that was my ballsiest tip in this whole thing. And that will actually see them jump back into the top four. Port Adelaide in fifth there on percentage. But obviously, if I'm wrong about the GWS one, then the power could effectively be in the top four. Collingwood jumped down to six after their bye. Fremantle in seventh and Geelong. If I tip them correctly to lose, they will be down in eighth spot. Melbourne really need to beat North Melbourne. There's no doubt about that, but that still won't be enough to make the top eight by the end of the round. Other than that, I think the latter order is more or less the same because of a few buys there. So thank you for watching this, guys. Let me know in the comments what your tips are, your upset of the round. I think my upset of the round is probably GWS over Sydney, but if you want a juicier one, there's North to beat Melbourne. And I think Carlton Geelong probably shapes as the game of the round, to be honest. But I'm, like I said, I'm intrigued by Fremantle Gold Coast because I think only one of those teams can make the finals. And both of these teams might see this as a bit of a must win, I reckon. So that, that's got some juice to it. But anyway, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.